So I finally read Stranger Things Suspicious Minds. The main reason I bought this book uh, is because, I mean, they have Dr. Martin Brenner on the front cover. I was hoping this book would delve more into his mindset, who he is, what he's all about. You know, the same issue with the Doctors on the Edge of Town, it does give you insight, but not a whole lot of detail. You do learn more about him, and you're able to understand him a little bit better, but his motive, you know, his main goal, what he's trying to do, isn't fully explored. But he has Terry Ivis and his group go into the lab, and he's testing out psychedelics on them, and he wants to see what effects they have. The purpose, what made him start that experiment, is not revealed. It's just, it's happening. He's running tests and he's looking feedback from all of them. But they all figure out that, you know, there's more to this man than meets the eye. And <coughs> they start to become suspicious of him and they plot against him because they realize that he also out has kids in the lab as well. And they're wondering, you know, is this really the type of place that a kid should be kept in, especially the what this guy is doing to the adults, you know. Who knows what they're doing to the kids. I feel that this book was kind of toned down. There's a lot of aspects they could have explored. Um, none of the other characters, the only characters from this novel that show up in the show will be Terry Ivis and Dr. Martin Brown. None of the other characters, from what I can recall, are mentioned or seen again on the show. Season 2, you know, explores what happened to Terry Ivis, that she was, you know, pretty much lobotomized. You know, the electric shock treatment. Uh, that is foreshadowed in this novel. It does... Uh, one of the characters does have a vision of that they're well on the psychedelics and they have the option to tell Terry but they don't because Terry is like you know doesn't want to know what happens to her in the future and it's one of those cases where if she had known things could have played out differently but uh, she wasn't meant to know that was meant to happen it's it had some really cool other foreshadowing where it shows um, one of the characters has a vision of Eleven and they think that this is happening in the present and they don't realise that later on this is the future um, what they're seeing is G and I was his daughter. It doesn't necessarily end with um, Terry Ivis giving you like a shock treatment. It just ends with her finding out that Martin Brenner did in fact steal Eleven. She finds a photograph of Eleven delivered to her and she's just like, okay, she's alive. So this book here, Stranger Things Suspicious Minds by Gwenda Bond, it's a prequel to season one of the Netflix series Stranger Things. And it really does delve into the history of Hawkins Laboratory. The main character is Terry Ivis, who would be Jean Ivis' Eleven's mum, her birth mother. And this tale, I will say I enjoyed this book. I wouldn't say that I loved this book. I, in ways, I liked it more than Stranger Things Darkness from the Edge of Town. In ways, I, I liked it more than this one. And in all ways, I like this one more than this book. A lot of people hate this book, and I can see why. Um, there's another YouTuber done a review in this here, and he said it was full of social justice warrior bullshit. And I can see where he comes from. Gwenna Bond seems to... The way she's wrote this book, it's almost like she has a th thing, you know, a dislike for straight white males. <laughs> you know, uh, for example... Like any any time you know any fella any man does any, any fella does anything, uh, they're ridiculed for it, you know. And this is not with Doctor Martin Brenner who is no angel or perfect in any way, but even with uh, Terry's uh, boyfriend Andrew, <sighs> I kind of felt like a dig. For example, whenever uh, Terry Ivis is in the Hawkins lab, she has to slip into a hospital gown, and. The author has wrote, oh, clearly designed by men. First of all, I'm going to put one thing out there. They don't actually know who came up with the idea or designed the hospital gowns back in those times. Uh, it probably could have been designed by a man. It could have been any attempt to attack uh, men. Uh, any opportunity was given. I find myself enjoying this story. I will say it's not like the show where the characters bloom, the story just expands, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, that there wasn't really that much depth, uh, if anything. It was, it was more bland. Uh, the characters, like, they didn't really grow. Like, they did grow, but they didn't blossom, like, to the extent they do in the show. 
there was nothing groundbreaking about this story. Nothing changes the lore. It's more like an introduction to the introduction. Uh, season 1 being an introduction to the show, this book being an introduction to Season 1. It does answer a lot of questions from Season 1. It really does tie into it. It tells you things you already know, but it also explores the relationships that you didn't know Terry Iris had. Uh, I was wanting to know, you know, the friends that she makes in this novel. Where are they during the show? One of them got away. They made sure of that. But the likes of Alice and Ken, you know, I like the scene how they would have reacted uh, seeing Terry because of Dr. Martin Brenner. I like the scene, you know, what they would have thought. You know, surely they would try to have done something. But uh, no, maybe they realised they're powerless. Terry Ivis was ballsy trying to take down Martin Brenner. She really was. Very clever as well. It's funny in parts of this here towards the end, which she does. She makes it difficult for him. I'm not saying much, but it's hilarious. I'd say I reckon after the electric shock treatment, you know, the other characters might have realised, okay, Dr. Martin Brennan is bigger and more dangerous than they thought. You know, uh, I'd say after that, that was enough to strike fear into them. Okay, this is a guy that, you know, not even we could take down. I was hoping it would get to that part in the book, but it doesn't. It doesn't reach that part before she gets the electric shock treatment. You know, see, I was, uh, while I was reading this, I was wondering, what is it that happens in this book? I want to see the moment where Terry Ivers just snaps, gets a gun, shoots up Hawkins' lab. I was hoping that would be in this here, and surprisingly it wasn't. Which makes me wonder, are they going to make another novel following Terry Ivers? Or maybe one of the other novels that exists explores that in a flashback? I don't know. I wouldn't say it was perfect. I wouldn't say it was bad. It was certainly enjoyable, and I probably will end up reading it again. I find the characters very likeable. I wouldn't say they were lovable like on the show, but these characters, you know, they were interesting. But uh, there was so much more that they could have delved into, but they decided not to. It's, it's almost like, see, reading these two books, right? Reading these two books, it's almost like, you know, the author is kind of afraid to go into the lore and explore the relationships and what they could do, where these stories lead to. It's almost like they're afraid to do that. They're, I don't know how the authors do this. I want to say, what I mean is, did Adam Christopher and Gwena Bond talk to the Duffer brothers and be like, you know, what happened here? Like, did they fill them in on the past and then they took a, sum a summary of that there and made their own story? Or did they just watch the show and write their own interpretation based on what they'd seen? Like, are these books even canon? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. But as I said in the previous uh, book review video of For Darkness on the Edge of Time, they could just be saving some of this information for other novels, or they could be saving it for later seasons of the show. Who knows? But, um, it was a fun read. I read through it within a good few days. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that, but smoke alarm went off. Nothing's being cooked. Maybe we just need a new smoke alarm. Could just be the sensor tripped on us. No. Eight ninety nine. Bought off Amazon. Martin Brenner. It's almost like, you know, the way I look at this, this should be a meme. Let's say you're in the changing rooms and you've just stepped out of the shower and you took the towel off and then you hear something, you turn around, look at the door and there's Martin Brenner eyeing you up. <laughs> He's like, ooh, so that's what you look like. <laughs> Being a perv. Mm -hmm. Or, I wish mine was as big as yours. <laughs> uh, suspicious minds. They put him on the front cover of the book, but yet he's not necessarily the main focus of the book. He is in it quite a lot, actually. Not an awful lot, but, you know, it's more focused on Terry and her friends, but he is in it. And again, whenever I, he was in this here, and whenever he speaks in this, and whenever Terry Ives speaks in this, I just, you know heard the voices of the actors who played them on the show speaking through this. Again, like I said before, she was very much of a good job the actors done bringing those characters to life. I would like to read more on Terry Ivis. Maybe get Adam Christopher to adapt the next novel, if they're going to do that. I really do feel like they should definitely just give us more. They'll just let them reveal up and show I knew. But it doesn't necessarily go through. It doesn't, like, give you loads of information. There was more information in this one here than there was for this one. But uh, 
Don't go any way to buy it. If you love Stranger Things and you want to know more about Eleven's mum, yeah, you do. Uh, you can give it a read. My face says it all. But I did enjoy it. But I didn't love it. I've read better books than this. My readers. <laughs>